Hey guys, how's it going? Valley Venture Investing here today. So today we're going to be talking about Air Canada. They just released their Q1 2024 earnings. And I gotta say, again, and I've been saying this for a while, I do not understand the price action of this stock. Uh, the earnings were Thursday of last week. Uh, we saw a pretty big dump. If you're looking at six months here, we're pretty range bound. Uh, share price about $18.76 per, uh, per share. And we've got a market cap of about $6.72 billion. So just wanted to say <laughs> going forward here, I mean, pretty soon we might see Air Canada having somewhere around $20 billion in revenue um, and a market cap of $6.72 billion. Uh, again, they still have more cash than the entire value of the company. Um, and, you're, and you're probably gonna say, well, they have some debt. Yes, well, we're gonna talk about the debt as well. I thought this was quite interesting. <clears throat> This is the net income since uh, you know roughly 2019, 2018-ish area. Uh, you can see when the stock was anywhere from 18 to 52 dollars per share. We were we were kind of in that range right now. Of course, this last quarter we have an 80 we had an 81 million dollar loss, um, but we had a 1.25 billion dollar um, uh, profit before that. Um, and you can kind of see the numbers around here, 1.75 billion, uh, they had a loss of 170 million, uh, gain of 645 million, uh, uh, 345 million dollar uh, gain. So we're kind of like right in those ranges. And I know that there's a lot of different factors that come into this, right? It's, it's not just you know net income for the quarter, but I thought this was kind of a good way to visualize how it's went and we're not that far off. And one of the big things that you'll be saying as well, they have, they have more debt. So here's debt as well. You can see that the debt, this is long-term debt, has increased uh, you know, quite significantly after the drop here in 2020, right? But they've been consistently paying that down. We're about $11.24 uh, billion dollars in long-term debt. Long -term debt. Um, so it's, it's quite significantly more, but it's, it's not adding up to me in terms of the share price. I, I don't believe, given the recovery we see here, net income, and how we've seen them paying down this debt that this stock is valued where it's at. And it bewilders me a little bit. There's many different reasons we're gonna talk about it. Um, but this is just something interesting to look at. So when we look at uh, the numbers here, I got Q2, Q3, Q4 uh, of last year, and then Q1 of 2024, I got year over year comparisons here. Um, so we can actually see the percentage gains year over year. Passenger revenue, uh, we're about four, Point four billion dollars this quarter. Uh, it was about four, you know, four point zero eight billion a year ago, up almost nine percent. Cargo revenue was down uh, year over year. Other uh, revenue was uh, slightly up, and total revenue year over year was up about seven percent. So we've definitely seen the revenue increase quite a bit. Uh, in terms of sequentially, from last quarter, we've seen a, you know a little, it drop a little bit here. Again, cargo has been a little bit weak. We're going to talk about that, but others been increasing. Uh, and of course, total revenues increased as well. Net income was negative eighty-one million dollars this quarter. There's reasons for that. I'm going to get into that uh, because if you uh, look into certain items, we'd actually be quite similar uh, to a year ago, where we had about a four million dollar profit. Earnings per share uh, negative twenty-two cents, and the cash has gone down to seven point eight eight billion. Of course, because they've paid off some of their debt, uh, so that's down about seven point three nine uh, percent. Uh, but Liquidity wise, they say they, I think they said they got about $10 billion in liquidity. So they're still quite strong there. Uh, and they talk about repurchasing shares possibly, and we will get into that. Uh, well, at least I'm thinking they're talking about repurchasing shares. In terms of the income statement here, like I said, uh, total revenues are $4.22 billion. Uh, a year ago, they were $4.887 billion. This is on a year over year basis. The big reason you're saying, well, okay, they've had their revenue were significantly increased. Well, they had some operating expenses that really offset this. Um, as you can see here, we had $5.2 billion in operating expenses versus $4.9 billion. Some of the notable ones, wages, salaries, and other benefits. That was a pretty big increase. A lot of that, I'm going to get into that, has to do with possible uh, wages increasing for pilots and the negotiations. I think they might be sandbagging this a little bit. Uh, because they're flying more aircraft maintenance has increased quite a bit as well 315 million versus 261 that's to be expected um, so for the quarter they had an operating loss or, or rather sorry an operating gain of 11 million dollars uh, versus a loss of 17 million dollars uh, a year ago 
Uh, some of the biggest things that we've seen here, I'm not too sure if you guys can see the bottom here. Uh, I'll try to zoom in. Okay, is um, when we're looking at their, I'm on the wrong one now, sorry about that guys. There we go, that's better. Um, <laughs> they're not operating uh, uh, income here. We had a loss on debt settlements of $46 million. So that brought us down to a total non-operating expense of $76 million. So if you added that back, and we'll talk about what that was, it was basically due to paying back their debt. We were getting pretty close to being even Steven, uh, cut a couple more things and maybe even having a profit. So that's something uh, to take into account. So their net uh, income, which was a loss for the period was $81 million versus a year ago, they had a $4 million gain. So that's probably what a lot of the news outlets are focusing on. But if you don't do a deep dive here and see, well, why? I mean, we had other things as well. Foreign exchange gain was not as significant as a year ago. But then that was kind of offset. The interest rates have gone up. They had you know $125 million in interest income versus only 83 a year ago. Uh, and then likewise, uh, interest expense, this is that as well. That was slightly uh, less than a year ago. So there's different things, but this is a big one um, that uh, essentially is um, a one-time event. There is also, I will talk about this later as well, there's also another um, another operating expense of about $20 million hidden somewhere in here. So again, between the two of those, yeah, you're pretty close um, to a even Steven sort of deal, if you will. Balance sheet, again, like we said, cash, cash equivalent, 7.88 billion versus uh, 8.55 billion a year ago, but we know the reasons for that as well. And again, here, uh, note three, we'll talk about this as well. Um, this is one is very important, long-term debt and lease liabilities. They paid that down, 11.248 billion, it was about a billion dollars or so that they paid off their balance sheet. Uh, so that's been coming down, that was kind of like in that other photo I showed you, it was almost $13 billion a year ago. They're paying that off, that's good. And another reason where I kind of think, like, why does the market not recognize this, right? Uh, cash flow, so their operating cash flow is 1.5, uh, about $1.6 billion versus 1.4, so operating cash flow was uh, better than last year. And this is, I'm not gonna get into this too much, this is the kind of the abnormality here. Um, basically what happens is they refinance some of their debt um, and they also uh, paid off a significant amount of that. And that, that gave them $30 million in financing fees. So that's a pretty big little hit there. So I think these are items that you could probably exclude because uh, they're kind of one-time events. Um, so I just thought that's something that a lot of people are not talking about. Going into the conference call here, guys, um, again, like I said before, cargo, has been lacking a little bit. Sounds like they're backing off a little bit of that. They're still gonna be updating their fleet for it. Um, they said they had high volumes, but the revenue declined due to softer yields. So they're gonna be reducing some of their fleets, like I said, due to market conditions. And this is where they had a one-time $20 million operating expense. So you gotta take that into account as well because they're shifting, they're pivoting, right? So this bottom line number that we're seeing, this negative $81 million loss, it's it, it doesn't tell the whole picture, right? Uh, some expenses increase faster than uh, uh, their company growth because they've obviously grown, right? We talked about this as well. Labor expense, uh, 21%. Um, this was due to profit sharing, which I'm not a big fan of this. I don't know exactly what that meant. And other wage-related initiatives. But the big thing is it includes an accru accrual sorry, for a future pilot agreement. And I think that they might be sandbagging this a little bit. If you think about it the way that we kind of have some of these sort of one-time expenses, um, if you're negotiating a union contract, and you're showing significant profit, that's gonna give the negotiating side, you know, the, the union side, way more leverage. Here they go, hey, we lost $81 million, right? So I think they're kind of sandbagging that a bit, so I don't think a lot of people are talking about that either, right? Uh, IT expenses, these are hopefully long-term uh, drivers of the company, increased 27%, so they're talking about um, modernizing their system, which probably could be one of the weaknesses of Air Canada in terms of things getting lost and whatnot. Cybersecurity is huge. Um, and their expenses were you know, uh, higher in some cases due to higher cloud cost. Uh, again, like I, I talked to you guys about before, they cut their, their debt by nearly 50% since the first quarter of 2022. And I don't think people realize they're trying to position, they're trying to get a better rating, right? Um, and that's gonna significantly benefit them into the future. April, again, I think this is the last two quarters here, they decided to hedge 50% of their fuel consumption. That was something that they didn't do before and they've started doing. So hopefully they can 
really start looking specifically about these where are we here these operating expenses if we can bring some of those down get to profitability more and of course we're gonna have growth as well but we'll talk about that in a sec um, this is the big one too that I've been very interested for a very long time on they're considering initiatives to directly reward shareholders now when they're talking about this at first they thought they were kind of talking about dividends but then later in the call they seem to kind of gravitate towards buybacks so another way to increase shareholder value and they're basically saying that their balance sheet is in uh, the position that it's in right now that that they can start looking at that so that could be a huge drive going forward as well you pay off that debt like i said if they eventually pay that debt off within the next couple of years this company could be generating you know 20 billion dollars a quarter i believe back 2019 there's some years where they're about 20 billion dollars a quarter you'll have to look to that last year what they did was pretty strong as well i think it was close to that um and with a market cap of like six seven billion dollars makes zero sense and if they had no debt at that time it makes absolute zero no sense so their guidance they're going to cap capacity growth between six and eight percent so again they're going to continue to grow so in terms of the share price guys i said this before i'll continue to say it sometimes i feel like it's just canadian companies here but it makes no sense i can't see why this thing's not at least trading at 28 29 dollars a share somewhere around there it makes no sense given what they're doing where we're at right now with this stock so interesting to see what goes you know what's going to happen going forward i'm continuing to hold i would love to know what you guys think leave a comment down below like thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next one